guys, BBH Bostic here bringing you my second video and commentary. Uh, this one will be covering a, a basic overview of the Annihilation map packs, uh, what to look for, what to be excited about. Xbox 360 has gotten them already and they should be shortly released uh, within the month's time on PS3. Um, don't forget to leave your feedback at the end of the video and sit back and enjoy. The first map on the list is Drive-In. This map is a small, close quarter combat map that isn't much bigger than Nuketown. It offers a grab bag variety of lanes and key positions for every type of playstyle. With the correct teamwork and coordination, you can easily defend off whichever side of the map you wish to contain and truly disappoint your opponents. The center of the map is very tempting to the average daredevil, but with its many vantage points overlooking the center, it would be unwise to be caught in the open unless it's an absolute must for your team's success. The most tempting places on the map are obviously the high and hidden ones. With drive-in, however, a word of warning comes with these. Where there is one sniper's perch, there is another one looking right back at it. It is important to know the locations of your teammates at all times, because an unexpected enemy may have a direct line of fire on you if you are stuck up in the air and in the open for too long. Each of these positions have an extreme advantage overlook of the center of the map, which is why I stress so much that an unexperienced player should never be out in the middle unless it's absolutely necessary. Each of these sniper positions on the map have a secondary lane that can be held down whether it's the trailer trash side of the map which is what you currently see in the video as of right now or on the opposite side of the map in the game rooms in key positions multiple players may be stationed in one location for optimal protection Each side of the map has plenty of opportunities for close quarter combat. Whether you're hiding in the tall grass like Elmer Fudd waiting on a rabbit, or just wanting to camp a corner in the local gaming center on some unsuspecting enemy to run through as he tries to make a decision on which tabletop game or pinball he wants to lose his money on, and in turn losing his life. This map also offers plenty of opportunity for the mid-range gunner as well. If you want to run a gun, shoot down lanes, snipe, or just camp in the corner, you have plenty of opportunity to do so in drive-in. Don't let the map fool you. While drive-in is a small map, it offers the ability to do big things if you communicate with your team well enough. you have an urge to have an all-out war in the presence of extraterrestrial? Well, Treyarch's Hangar 18 is Call of Duty's version of the Area 51. This map is the second largest map in the Annihilation map pack and is my second personal favorite. The key choke point for the majority of all scenario games is the center hangar that contains the highly elusive SR-71 Blackbird. A lot of structures around the perimeter of the hangar allow for plenty of excitement from shooting the bad guys to hearing random alien chatter on a computer. The highly classified and supernatural both exist on this map, which until now was just a myth and a legend. The center hangar of this map promises to be the most important and rewarding structure of the map. With carefully positioned members of your team, you can effectively cover and protect a vast majority of the map with little to no effort. While exploration is always fun, patience in this map has its greater rewards. Each side of the nose of the Blackbird has its biggest impact on the crowd control of the map. With your best Slayer in place, you can easily control the battle and soon your victory will be in hand. However, don't disregard the side entrances to the aircraft. They too are important to guard so your man positioned on the nose can safely watch his objective. 
The last to mention is the exit of the hangar. It's a small portion to watch and generally can be covered by those stationed in the upper side rooms. Last but not least on Hangar 18 are the surrounding buildings of the map. If your team prefers close quarter combat and wants to set up an umbrella shaped defense on the map, these buildings offer a decent amount of protection. But remember, if you're spread too thin, the multiple entrances to each location bring fear to being shot from behind. My suggestion to any team playing an objection-based situational game would be to maintain the middle hangar as stated before. Because as you see in the video, it would take multiple friendlies to hold down one location, and anything outside of a team deathmatch would possibly cost too much manpower to contain and cause you to lose sight of the objective. In a team deathmatch situation, however, two members in any three of the surrounding buildings is a recipe for disaster for the other team if you coordinate your zones carefully. Remember, communication is the key to any good relationship. Let your teammates know what you see, what's happening, and you can most definitely achieve maximum coverage and you should also expect a little disrespectful comments from the unsuccessful team when you re-enter the lobby. Silo is the next map on the Annihilation map pack list. Silo is the largest, the noisiest, and the most difficult map in Annihilation to coordinate teamwork with. Because of its many hiding locations, it becomes a map that almost draws out the camper inside of you. Patience is a must at this map. Rushing too much and you will surely meet a Claymore sitting in front of a player who is running Camper Pro as his first perk. Studying this map in a private session will be the most vital homework you can do for this map pack. Because just when you think you have every angle covered, a new one becomes apparent to you by Joe Blow sneaking around in an underground tunnel or through a cement pipe. Now, the most important building, in my opinion, is the center building atop of the hill on Silo. With the high road held down, you can use this altitude as a vantage point against those who like to find head glitches. By doing this, it allows you to gain maximum visibility of your target. Both sides of the map, however, have a high line sniper's roost that must be watched carefully. Around the outside of the perimeter, there are a lot of little edges, ladders, walkways, and ramps you can use to access if you pay attention carefully. This map has a lot of ambience and background noise due to the rockets being fired off periodically, so sometimes it is difficult to hear an enemy even if they are not using Ninja and you're using Ninja Pro. Again, it is super super important to understand that all the little cubby holes in this map, because there are a lot of them and you never know which one when you try to enter them will lead to your death. Pay attention, communicate with your teammates, and you should be just fine in handling this extremely large map. The last map to discuss in Annihilation Map Pack is by far my most favorite. Whether it's the beautiful scenery, amazing positions for gunfire, or just some of the witty puns throughout the map, Hazard brings the most exciting gunplay in a map I have seen since Battlefield Modern Combat 2. As you can see from the aerial overhead view, there truly is only three rays around the map. There is the remake of Cliffside, the extremely dangerous pathway leading from the bar to the green, and the tempting yet almost always watch fairway. All three of these lanes have to be approached with caution because this map is filled with try-hard snipers who'd love nothing more to send a bullet straight at your head. This map has been set apart from the rest of the map packs in Annihilation due to its limited location for close quarter combat. However, they do still exist. On each corner of the map, there are located at least one small building or location for someone to have their shotgun boogie fun if played correctly. These buildings will not be crowded because the majority of players cannot resist the long range battle as I have seen it far too tempting myself and first hand to take my shot at the center field of battle. 
Expect limited competition for camping positions inside these buildings, and don't be surprised if you don't see a lot of action either. Low kills and deaths should be assumed when nestled inside these buildings. On to the more expected discussion of this map, sniping. Yes, just about every location on the map has a clear view of the fairway, and more than likely, most of them will be populated with Grizz wannabes who can't wait to yell for as a 50 caliber bullet pierces through your brain. My suggestion to anyone that may be watching this, or may be playing this map, unless you're an extremely coordinated gamer with pinpoint accuracy, save yourself the blood pressure, a controller, and quite possibly a broken Call of Duty disc, and stay out of the fairway. Use those limited lanes and cut throughs to move around the map. Remember, the fairway isn't necessarily fair, and the sand trap is quite literally a trap. Keep your head low, keep your eye on the fairway, and the next hole in one could be your bullet putting a hole in one's face. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. You can also check out Bound by Honor information at bbhgaming.com. Stop by and say hello, and we cannot wait to hear from you. This is BBH Fostick, and thank you again.